Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and thank you for giving this video a chance. To all the subscribers out there, thank you so much for your support and to those who have donated to me financially to support my effort, appreciate your support. And also to the BDO online supporters, thank you so much for contributing the bronze package pass to our viewers. Now, today's video, I'm going to talk about two main things. The first one is to teach you guys how to identify three tiers of ships in the major content of sailing. The next thing I'm going to do is to reverse engineer the path upgrades of each type of ship and to help you identify which path you should go to depending on your playstyle. So without further ado, let me jump right into this video to showcase the various kinds of ship and how you can identify them visually. Firstly, let us identify the traits of each type of ships, given that we have mentioned three tiers of it. The first tier, let us look at the ethereal versions, be it the sailboat path or the frigate path. They all have cannons that is on deck, okay? That means the cannon is mounted on the ship itself, just like this. For the tier 2 ships, it's easy to tell when you notice that the few cannons right now, which is more than the previous tier, is currently embedded under the deck of the ship itself. That means it's within the ship's body. So this is how you identify the tier 2, which is commonly known as either the caravel or the gallias, depending on the path that you are going for. The final versions of the ship is basically the Karak. The Karak basically has a lot of cannons, about 9 per side, and is the largest ship available in the game at this point of time on the video itself. So how do you identify a Karak? Basically, it's as big as this. Look at the tail end, it's very structured and very well designed. And then at the front, there's always an animal type that symbolizes the different kinds of ship. So as the ship turns right now, you'll be able to get a better picture of it. So this is the horse version. You can see the Karak itself. So uh, thanks to this stranger for turning the ship for me right now. And uh, I hope this helps you identify the Karak as the final version of the ship upgrade that you guys will want to go for. Instead of doing it the conventional way, starting from tier 1 and tier 2 to tier 3, I'm going to reverse engineer the process of explaining the upgrade path. We're going to start off from the final tier, which is the tier 3 Karak class. We're going to talk about the pros and cons, so that right from the start of this video, you will be able to decide what is best for you. And then we look and trace back to the upgrade path to see where is the starting point you should start with. There are four types of characters to begin with. The Balance, Advance, Volante, and the Valor. The Balance is a jack of all trades. Depending on how you like to play the game, some players would not like this because Balance means you are just even out in everything, you don't have a specialization. As compared to the Advance, Advance holds more weight limit, which is good for buttering. Buttering is a life skill content that is over the waters, whereby you take an object and you go to an island and you trade it for another object. Once you trade to a certain tier, you'll be able to sell the object for money. So that's how you earn money through buttering on the seas. The next one is Volante. Volante is a high-speed sailing ship, whereby it has the ability to sail and maneuver very fast on water. And finally, the Valor. Valor ships are ships that are combat focused. They are able to reload cannons way faster than other ships, so you'll be able to fire more frequently the cannons that you have on the ship. So depending on whether you just want it to be all balanced out, or you want more weight limit, or you want higher sailing speed, or a faster cannonball reload speed, you have to decide at this point of time which type you are going for. So here on the screen, you're looking at the tier 2 and you realize that there is a tree shape branching downwards and that means if you go for the caravel path, you will be able to select either the Karak advance or the Karak balance at the end of the day. If you go for the Gallius version, 
all right, of the Ethereum class, you will be able to select either Valor or Volante at the end of the day. So that's what you want to understand when you are going for the upgrade path. Now, you realize that I did indicate additionally an info. Caravel has two cannons per side, that means total of four cannons, while the Gallius has four cannons per side, total of eight cannons. And the best part about the tier two, the Ethereum Caravel or Gallius path is this. You can use your left click and right click to fire the cannons while you're still steering the ship which is something that is not possible for the tier 1 that I'll explain later on. The tier 1 ship is known as Ethereum Sailboat or the Ethereum Frigate. Either or, these are the tier 1s. The tier 1s are not exactly very combat friendly because you can't fire the cannons while you are steering the ship. Meaning to say you have to unmount from the steering, go down to the decks and then mount onto the cannon and start to fire. After you fire the cannons, you have to wait a while for the cooldown to take place before you can do so again. And then you have to unmount the cannon after the cooldown, step back up to the ship again just to continue steering the ship. So this is a frustration that many first-time users of the frigate or the sailboat users would experience. However, don't worry so much, the moment you upgrade to tier 2, you will be enjoying the firing of the cannons because it will be very easy, you can just left and right click while you steer to fire. So keep going for the upgrade first and don't focus too much on the killing of the monsters when you are at the first tier. Also, what you want to understand is this. During the stage of going from tier 1 to tier 2, there is an improved version. The improved version requires lesser materials to let you reach this improved version. Improved version will allow you to do the auto left click and right click firing while you are steering the ship. However, here's the catch. While you are able to use lesser materials to get this upgrade first, you will still have to upgrade one more additional time in order to reach the Caravel and the Gallia stage. So you have two options here. To go improve means you gotta upgrade two times. Improve followed by another upgrade to the Gallius or the Caravel. Or you can one shot just greet your teeth and then from there one shot from the Ephraim sailboat or frigate just go directly to the Gallius or the Caravel. Personally, I went for a direct upgrade because the time consumed to do a direct upgrade although it's slightly longer due to the materials. However, it doesn't take that long, okay? If you are a casual player, you can do it within less than a month or so. If you are a fast player with a lot of silver to invest and buying things from the market, you can do it within 12 to 14 days, which is the time I took actually to upgrade my uh, frigate to the Gallias within 14 days. So it really depends, all right? Your play time will determine how far or how fast you can upgrade your ship. So at the end of the day, if you start off from the sailboat version of the ship tier 1s, you will go to Caravel, which is the tier 2, and then you can choose from there to upgrade whether to the balance or the advanced version. Similarly, if you are using the frigate path, the first frigate path of tier 1, then you will go to Gallius, followed by a choice between Volante and Valor. So by knowing the final stage, what are the pros and cons, you will be able to identify the focus that you want your C content to go towards and then know where to start off by the way that I'm explaining in this guide. Now, I hope this guide has helped you identify the ship path that you want to go to. If you have more questions, come by my Discord server, which is the link on the screen right now, and you can ask questions in my Discord server. I can assure you that in this server, all new players are respected just like veterans because we have strict rules 
use to create a positive community. At the same time, if you like guides like this that is explained for new players like you who are watching the video, remember to hit the red subscribe button and give this video a like. When you click the like button, this video will get promoted more on YouTube means you get a higher chance to see my guides. And when you click the subscribe button, it's in a way to help support my channel to grow it so that it gets more recognized as well. Now, if you want to support me further, you can make a small donation all right, to support me via either Patreon or PayPal. It's really up to you. Um, no obligations, of course. So if you have any more questions, remember, drop by my Discord, ask the questions in the relevant section. YouTube has a problem right now with comments because comments suddenly will disappear. Even though I'm the one replying you guys, a few minutes later, it will disappear for no apparent reason. So just take note, if you have questions, come by my Discord. You're welcome to join the Trinity Online community. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I definitely and certainly hope that I have helped one or two of you out there. And if you want, you can still leave a comment in the comment section. Now with this, I will say bye bye to you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video when I talk more about the various aspects of bartering on the sea and also more contents that I'll be covering for Trinity Online YouTube channel. So take care guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.